Welcome to this Story Walk read-along for Joe McDonald Saw a Pond, written by Mary Quattlebaum, illustrated by Laura J. Brandt. I'm Ms. Emily from the Youth Services Department at the Oak Lawn Public Library. Story Walk at the Lake Shore Park in the Oak Lawn Park District System started in 2015 with a partnership between the Oak Lawn Public Library and the Oak Lawn Park District. Feel free to look south back towards the street where there is a map of this trail as, long as, as well as some general information. If you have been on this story walk before, welcome back. Here is the first panel. You have already seen the title here and it also has the back cover as well. And this back cover has a quote about this book from both Cheryl Charles as well as Bill Hilton Jr. Cheryl Charles, PhD and co-founder of Project Learning Tree, Project Wild, and the Children and Nature Network said, what a refreshing way for young children to learn and appreciate some of the wonders of the natural world. In addition to the fun and friendly lyrics, this familiar song, the author provides background information for a resource for older friends, family, teachers who may be reading this lovely book too. And John Hilton Jr., the executive director of Hilton Pond Center in Piedmont Natural History, here is a delightful take on a favorite song that will encourage young people to go out and discover the wonders of pond and pond critters for themselves. Anyone who remembers the excitement that came when exploring a woodland pond will want to share this book with a child. All right, let's go on to the second panel. So if you look at the bottom of the posts, there's going to be a number. This, that was panel number one. So we are now walking currently to panel number two. It should say number two at the bottom of the panel. If I'm walking faster or slower than you, please feel free to pause or speed up this podcast so when you get to those particular posts, you have me talking about them. So here we are at station two. This has the inside panel um, where it actually talks about old McDonald had a pond. Yes, burp, croak, quack. Come along with Joe McDonald to learn about the wild creatures at the pond on the farm. You'll find fish, frogs, ducks, and a few surprises. Again, it has the title page from Dawn Publications for this Joe McDonald Saw a Pond book. And you also are already at the link to be able to access this video as well as please remember to scan that QR code at the end of the book and leave us feedback, even if it's just letting us know that you were here and how many, we greatly appreciate it for our statistics. So now we're going to move from station two to station three. So you wanna walk on over there. And as you are going to station three, feel free to um, look around and see if you can see any water in the general area. Uh, you might notice that there is some in the distance, not quite where we are at. Now this page right here is the SIP. And the SIP page is actually the Library of Congress page that says where all the information is supposed to be about this particular book. It is the uh, cataloging and publishing information, as well as the wonderful dedication to my dad, for the many wonder-filled times at the pond. Um, that was from the author. And then the illustrator has two Nana and Grandpa. And this book was written back in 2011. All right, and you can see here is Jo McDonald with the braid uh, in her hair and her grandfather, and they are going over to the pond from Old McDonald's farm. So now we're gonna be going uh, sort of to the left to see panel four. So you wanna take a walk over there. And just like Jo McDonald is walking with her grandfather, um, you can be walking with your family as you are doing this. Now, if you heard me say the title of this book several, several times, you probably are like, hmm, Jo McDonald saw a pond. And then when people were talking about this, they were saying, 
hmm, this is based on a song. So yes, we are going to be singing the lyrics to Joel McDonald's Saw Pond. All right, so here we are at panel number four. And so we are going to be singing the lyrics. You can see here's Joe McDonald. Uh, looks like it's more of a ponytail than a braid. She's going to the pond and she has a sketchbook with her. So here we go. Joe McDonald saw a pond, E-I-E-I-O. And in that pond she saw some reeds, E-I-E-I-O. With a swish swish here and a swish swish there. Here a swish, there a swish, everywhere a swish, swish. Joe McDonald saw a pond, E-I-E-I-O. Now, the reeds that they're showing here in this picture are actually cattails. And those look like tall green grass-like structures in the water there. And those brown, almost look like corn dogs or hot dogs on a stick, are the seed heads. And those will get really fluffy and puffy and all the seeds will fly through the air in the fall. Um, so, as you are walking from station four to station five, uh, please practice your swishing. So your arms can be up by, up by your head or by the side, and you're gonna swish, swish here, and a swish, swish there. There, a swish, there, a swish, everywhere, a swish, swish, as you're walking to the next station, number five, E-I-E-I-O. Oh, hopefully you're swishing around all over the place. That will be so fun. All right, so now we are going to the next panel. All right, and this panel, ooh, on a rock. All right, so you can see that big rock and she's looking down into the water. And what does she see in the water but some fish? So let's sing it the lyrics. And in that pond she saw some fish E-I-E-I-O, with a blurp, blurp here, and a blurp, blurp there. Here a blurp, there a blurp, everywhere a blurp, blurp. Joe McDonald saw some fish, E-I-E-I-O. All right, so we're gonna go to panel number six. And as we are going to panel number six, I want you to either swim like the fishies or make fishy faces as you're walking there. So you can swim like a fish over there. You can make fishy faces as you're going over there. You can um, try to swim backwards if you want, but be careful, you don't wanna fall over. Um, but you got lots of different fishy moves and think about how that fish wiggles back and forth as well as you're going to panel number six. And remember, look on the bottom of the panels and actually see the number that is on the post so you know you're at the right one. All right, so here is panel number six. Oh, Joe McDonald is drawing this animal in her sketchbook, and I can even see her drawing. And does anybody know what she's going to be drawing? Frogs! So if you notice, in this picture, everything that she's talking about is sort of adding on. You can see the reeds or cattails first. There's also still the fish. Now we're adding some frogs. So let's sing those lyrics, everybody. And in that pond she saw a frog, E-I-E-I-O, with a croak, croak here and a croak, croak there. Here a croak, there a croak, everywhere a croak, croak. Joe McDonald saw a frog, E-I-E-I-O. Now every type of frog has different types of sounds. So as we are walking to panel number seven, I want you to hop like a frog while I tell you about certain frog sounds. So you can see bullfrogs say more of a gutterum, gutterum, gutterum. Spring peeper frogs go beep, beep, beep. And each frog has their own unique sound that you can learn to identify. And there's even toads, and the toads make a long trill. All right. but. I digress, you have hopped all the way to number seven. So let's sing panel number seven. And what animal do we see here? A duck! So, and her little ducklings I see as well. So let's sing it. And in that pond she saw some ducks, 
E-I-E-I-O. With a quack quack here and a quack quack there. Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack. Joe McDonald saw some ducks. E-I-E-I-O. All right, everybody. Now we're going to be traveling to panel number eight. So I need you to be moving like a duck. Waddle back and forth, flap those wings, quack, quack, quack as you move on over there. And this is actually no ordinary duck. This is a mallard duck. The males have a green head and gray body. But the females, they are camouflaged in all browns to help protect their babies. All right, let's head up to number eight. Number eight, let's sing the song. And, in, and by that pond, she saw a bird, E-I-E-I-O, with a scree, scree here and a scree, scree there. Here, scree, there, scree, everywhere, scree, scree. Joe McDonald saw a pond, E-I-E-I-O. Now, if you notice, she says a bird in this one, and the one before was a duck. Now, the duck and this bird are both birds. This bird is a red-winged blackbird. And they sound like this. That's their big call to defend their territory. The females will usually do a scree, scree, scree when they're calling in their mate. Um, but that male that is in that tree there with those big red and orange shoulders, red winged blackbird. So excellent. All right, let's head on over to panel number nine. Um, as we're walking over there, you can flap your wings and fly over like the red-winged blackbird. And to the south or the left is the Dream Center. The Dream Center was used to be a nature center and a park maintenance garage in the past. So if you haven't, don't know that, now you do. So here is panel number nine. All right. And what animal is noon this time? There's three of them in this picture. A raccoon. So let's sing the song. And at that pond, she saw a raccoon. E-I-E-I-O. With a chat, chat here and a chat, chat there. Here a chat, there a chat, everywhere a chat, chat. Joe McDonald saw a raccoon. E-I-E-I-O. And you can see there's an adult raccoon with two little babies. Now raccoons walk on all fours and they sort of waddle back and forth. If you turn around, and by the bridge there, um, look to the side, you can see panel number 10 is where we're going to next. So if you're able to, and if it's safe to do so, see if you can waddle on over there on all fours to get to panel number 10. All right, don't cross the bridge now. And the bridge is going over some water. And if you're at panel number 10, look again at the bottom on the post, it should say number 10 on there. If you look to your left, you should be able to see the pond for the creek, the Stony Creek over there. All right, so let's read and sing the lyrics to panel number 10. And at that pond, she saw a deer, E-I-E-I-O, with a flick, flick here and a flick, flick there. Here a flick, there a flick, everywhere a flick, flick. Joe McDonald saw a deer. E-I-E-I-O. You can see there's an adult deer and a baby deer and the adult deer is drinking water. All right, so we're gonna go to panel number 11 now. As you're walking to panel number 11, I want you to be like a deer. Stand up nice and tall, reach that head out as you're walking and be looking around for everything. Deer have lots of predators, things that like to hunt them and so they always have to be on a lookout. So keep those eyes wide open, head up high, looking in both directions as we get to panel number 11. And what animal is there? Oh, this is one of my favorite pond animals, a dragonfly. And look at that dragonfly, it's hovering right by her head. Some people get nervous when dragonflies are flying by their heads because they're fairly loud and buzzy when they're flying by you. But they are the fighter pilots of the insect world. They eat mosquitoes and they fly around so fast they snap them right out of the, out of the air for the adults. And even when they're babies and they're in the water, they eat the baby mosquitoes that are in the water. 
So we love dragonflies because they love to eat mosquitoes. And I would love to have less mosquitoes. So anyways, let's sing panel number 11. And at that pond, she saw a dragonfly, E-I-E-I-O, with a whirl, whirl here and a whirl, whirl there. Here a whirl, there a whirl, everywhere a whirl, whirl. Joe McDonald saw a dragonfly, E-I-E-I. -E oh, notice it's on the other section. I can't finish it yet until we get over to panel number 12. So hurry, head on over to panel number 12, because I can't finish this song. Go, 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 go. I'm not sure how fast you're able to walk. I'll give you a few more moments just in case. Oh! Splash! Do you see what happened on panel number 12? The dragonfly was almost eaten by a fish. Oh my goodness gracious. All right, let's head on over to panel number 13. Let's see what happens next. We saw fish, we saw ducks. Oh my goodness gracious. We saw dragonflies, red-winged blackbirds, deer, raccoons, frogs, reeds, or the, the cattails. Lots of really cool stuff. Okay, here we are at panel number 13 with a swish swish here and a burp burp there, a croak croak here and a quack quack there, with a screech screech there and a chat chat there, with a flick flick here and a whirl whirl there. Notice those three dots, that means it's going to continue on the next panel. So now we have to go to panel number 14. So we have to keep on going. Make sure you keep on going all the way 14. If you have to look at the bottom to make sure you're on the right spot, that's okay. All of these panels are going to be facing the pond, or I'm sorry, the creek as you are walking. So make sure you stay on that side. Let's go to panel number 14. Here a croak. There a quack. Where is all the chick? chat what starts happening in all the pictures everyone's disappearing i see the frog sort of hiding there and a baby ducky fighting and the, the raccoon just a little tail and even joe mcdonald is only just her leg and her foot showing there hmm well let's head on over to panel number 15 and see where all of the animals are going see if this story will help us out Oh, I see a house in this picture. I see some flowers in this picture. And here is Joe McDonald. Let's sing this part of the song. Joe McDonald saw a pond, E-I-E-I-O. Old McDonald saw it too, E-I-E-I-O. Oh, and look, Joe McDonald is showing her pictures to old McDonald, her grandfather. Oh, isn't that nice? Hopefully you like to draw pictures too. All right, that's page 15. So now we're gonna go to page 16. So feel free to walk on over and hopefully you're thinking about all the different cool animals that you've seen uh, in that pond that Joe McDonald saw. And if you come over to this panel here on 16, you can actually see Joe McDonald's pictures. You can see the dragonflies, the deer, frog, fish, the, the duck, the red-winged blackbird, the raccoon, the cattails, and it says Joe drew pictures of the pond members. Can you match each thing with the sound it makes? So can you remember what each sound what each thing made. Um, I see swish swish and light blue on that page. And I think that belonged to the plant. Which one of these was the plant? You can point to it on the panel. The blurp blurp. Oh, who made the blurp blurp sound? Can you point to that on this panel? Scree, scree. What animal was that? I'll give you a hint. It had red on its wings. Flick, flick. <gasps> Who was flicking their tail in this story? Can you point to that? Splash. 
Oh, who made the splash? Quack. I have a funny feeling you're going to know exactly who made the quack. Whirr. Oh, who was whirling around, flying around by someone's head? Chat. Who is making the chat chat sound? I think they wear a mask. Can you point to that one? Croak. Oh, that's one sound this animal can make, but there are so many different sounds that this animal can make. See if you can point them out. All right, now please stay to the left of the trail so you can find panel number 17. So head on over to panel number 17. And here there's going to be more information about all the different things that you saw today in the story. So at panel number 17 here, again, look for the number one seven. The song, the song Old MacDonald Had a Farm is taught generations of children about farm animals. Now, the farmer's granddaughter, Jo MacDonald, used the traditional tune to introduce a pond community. So here's information about the pond. Every member of a pond community or ecosystem is important, including plants, insects, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. They depend on each other in different ways, and some serve as food for others. Even one-celled organisms too tiny to see play a vital role. Each pond member makes its own sound, sometimes loud, sometimes very quiet. Listen to the lively music of a pond, you can hear the individual members. So cattails can grow up to 10 feet tall. These reeds help shelter frogs and mammals and in fish and insects that might nibble on them. Red-winged blackbirds build their nests on them. The cattail flower both female brown tubes and male yellow spike parts. So then we had the bluegills. Those are the fish that we saw. They're named for the color of the gill flaps. Bluegills eat water insects and are eaten by large fish, birds, and turtles. A mature female bluegill can lay more than 20,000 eggs. Oh my goodness gracious. Two or three times each year in nests in shallow water. Males watch over the eggs and the young called fry when they hatch. So baby fish are called fry. Oh, bullfrogs have external eardrums behind their eyes. In early summer, female br br bullfrogs <laughs> lay several thousand eggs catching attached to underwater plants. Their young called tadpoles eat insects and algae. As adults, they eat insects, fish, little frogs, and sometimes birds and snakes. Both tadpoles and adults provide food for fish, birds, snakes, and raccoons. The bullfrog is the largest frog in North America. You can hear its loud, low call from more than 400 yards. Oh my goodness gracious. That's more than four, that's like four football fields. Wow. Oh, mallards. Often a tail tipped up swimming, most likely eating aquatic plants and seeds, but also some insects. Males have the dark green heads and yellow Bill. Females are brown with orange bills. Females nest close to the water's edge, frequently in the same place every year. They carefully watch over their ducklings, which can also be preyed on by large fish, snapping turtles, and raccoons. Red-winged blackbirds. See, I was telling you all about these cool animals. I'm so glad it's at the end of the book, too. They get their name from the red shoulder patch on their otherwise black male. Females are stre streaked in dark brown and tans. Males are all, all, often singing on cattails and protecting their territories, but it's more difficult to spot the females and the babies in the nests nearby. These birds eat seeds, spiders, insects, including dragonflies. Oh, and there's our raccoons. They have a black face mask, bushy ring tail, and front paws. They use like hands. They even have, if you've ever seen a print of raccoons, they look like they have hands like us and feet like us for their back legs. It's really cool. They are most active at night and they search for plants, seeds, insects, fish, eggs, birds, and small rodents to eat. They sometimes eat garbage, they, a can that they can raid. You may have heard raccoons wash their food, but they're really rubbing and trying to break it up in the water. Females give birth to one to seven cubs in the spring. White-tailed deer eat different things at different times of the year. Mostly twigs in the winter, uh, varied green plants in the spring and summer, and acorns and grasses in the fall. They can run fast, up to 36 miles per hour, and jump more than 8 feet high! Wow! 
When startled, their tails flick straight up. Flash a white signal, danger to other deer to help the baby deer or fawn see and better follow their mothers. Only the bucks or male deer have antlers, which grow each year and shed in late winter. Yes, they actually grow those antlers every single year. They fall off and they grow a new set each year. Pretty cool. Let's move to panel number 18. Uh, please feel free to move like either any of these animals or make sounds of your favorite animals. That way you can have fun as we're moving across. All right. So, did you make it to panel number 18? We're almost to the end. There's only 19 panels in here. Now, this also has some more information. The pond community, green darners are the large, fast dragonflies. Do you think they look like big sewing or darning needles? That's how they got their name. Females lay their eggs in plants in the water. The eggs hatch into larvae called nymphs, which eat insects, tadpoles, and tiny fish. Nymphs shed their skin several times before becoming a winged adults. Dragonflies, including the green darner, are known as the hawks of the insect world and help keep mosquito populations under control. Then we have the largemouth bass. That was that last fish we saw that went uh, splashed in the water. Uh, can grow more than two feet long and weigh more than 20 pounds. Males make nests at the bottom of ponds and lakes. They guard eggs laid by females and watch over their young called fry for about a week after hatching. Largemouth bass eat frogs, bluegills, and other small fish, even insects like green darners, if they can catch them. Young bass are eaten by snapping turtles, large fish, herons, osprey, and eagles. So if you want to learn more, there is some other books here. Um, Near One Cattail, Pond Life, The Green Hour, and This Week at Hilton Pond. Uh, so there's some other options there. Also, if you want to be a naturalist like Joe, you can visit a pond just like the one here over at Lakeshore Park. Or if you want to go to Wolf Wildlife Refuge in Oak Lawn, go right there. You can create a sound map. There's an explanation of the sound map on this page. I love making sound maps of just sitting there and then drawing the sounds of whatever I think they would be represented in a picture uh, all around me. It's really fun. You can play a color game where you look for different colors while you're out in nature. Just make observations by listening and watching carefully and write down or take pictures of what you've seen. Also, feel free to share those observations. If you want to share observations with us here at the library, you can email them at youthservices at olpl.org. We love to see them. You can also become a citizen scientist. And there's lots of different projects we're out there that you can actually look at different animals and report that, or plants for that matter, and you can share that information with actual scientists for research. There's things through the National Wildlife Federations, Frog Watch, Cornell Lab of Ornithology, which is birds, Earth Trek as well, and so much more. You can even get some really cool activities from the dawnpub.com. All right, so now we are going to our next panel here. This should be one of our last ones. All right, so this is um, our last panel on here. And they have a picture of the author, Mary Quattlebaum. She grew up in the country, surrounded by woods and fields and with a pond like Joe McDonald. She first learned about plants and wildlife by helping tend her family's large vegetable garden and planting wildlife gardens as a 4-H project. Mary now lives in Washington, D.C., where she and her family enjoy watching birds, squirrels, butterflies, and other wild visitors to their backyard habitat. She is the author of many children's books and loves visiting schools and talks with kids. So she has her website. And then Laura Brandt, the illustrator, has always enjoyed drawing and was fortunate to have a creative mother and enthusiastic art teacher in school. She attended the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, where she studied painting, printmaking, and sculpture. After many years of searching for her ultimate job, she found it when in 1997 she started illustrating children's books. She has illustrated over 20 books, including If You Were My Baby, published by Dawn Publications, 
Illustrating children's books have given me an endless supply of creative freedom and joy. And then she has her website there. They list off a couple other books from this publisher, um, Eliza and the Dragonfly, The Web at Dragonfly Pond, In the Trees, Honeybees, Under One Rock, Bugs, Slugs, and Other Uggs, The Blues Go Birding series, a um, whole bunch of different ones there. And again, here is that QR code. So please scan that QR code. Give us your feedback back. Um, let us know that you were actually here. And we hope you enjoyed the story walk and my singing today. So thank you so much for coming out for this book. And hopefully you had a little bit of fun with me today. And remember, we do have extra copies of this book at the library. So you can bring it home and enjoy your day. Bye-bye, everyone.